If policymakers could understand one thing better about financial markets that they don't understand now, what would you want that thing to be and why? I'd want them to understand that, that any form of near certainty without certainty, any time you convince the world that something is a certainty but it's not is the most dangerous time humanly possible. I'd look back at the financial crisis and the, the key moments in it. A lot of arguments. I'm not even going to get into the partisan arguments. The, the right says government did it. The left says Wall Street did it. Great shocks. You know what did it? If I had to pick one thing, that, 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 that one primary cause of the financial uh, crisis, the assumption that real estate prices can't go down. The government made this assumption. The so-called model, people will say these terrible quantitative models were way off. At the end of the day, somewhere in this giant model, in a thousand lines of computer code, there was, what's the worst case 10-year return for real estate? If that worst case was not losing money, it's garbage in, garbage out. You can have the best model in the world. That's a problem. When Lehman failed, we went into a, a huge spiral because people were pretty much convinced that the government wouldn't let anyone fail. When money markets, when, when the famous uh, re reserve fund broke the buck, uh, this is uh, money markets is supposed to return you a dollar for a dollar. Uh, it's always been a fiction, by the way. You've been lied to for years. Money markets own portfolios of short-term bonds that move in value. They allow them to round to only, I think, two, I could be off by a decimal place, to only two decimal places. That's not a lot. Two decimal places for short-term securities means most of the time, almost all the time, it rounds to a dollar. Therefore, there's an illusion. But they're risky. That is, to me, a very dangerous asset because it tells people there's no risk when they're actually is risk. I'm not saying you have to go out a billion dollars. No one's going to want to NAV. What's your NAV? Pi. No one wants that. <laughs> but it's, it, it's, it's so short, it artificially looks stable. And when you tell the world there's risk in something, and then bad things happen, it's not, it's not fun. It's still bad things. But they tend to deal with it much better. The famous, um, uh, the, many people have observed, the internet uh, tech bubble that I keep talking about, when that came down, the economic consequences, the threats to our system were far more benign. Uh, and I think that's because no matter how crazy they might have gone, uh, nobody thought they were utterly riskless. They didn't act as a, as a group, as if there was no possible problem. Equity losses are expected. Bond losses are not expected. So I will, I will say this. If you truly can take all the risk out, great. If you tell everyone it's risky and it's risky, great. I think the people think people don't appreciate is how dangerous Things are you think protect you, but only mostly protect you. You probably drive a little too much, too aggressively, and you probably have an extra accident or two because of the seatbelt. My logic doesn't mean it's always bad to take preventive action. But if you thought, as we sometimes do in finance, like money market funds, that you could do anything in a car because you're wearing a seatbelt, that's kind of the money market analogy I'm making. And I think those are the most dangerous things.